Hello class, welcome to week 10, uh, excuse me, week 10, um, week 7, the last week of the course. I meant to say uh, chapter 10, uh, which is the last chapter of the textbook that we're going to be covering. So don't panic, you're in the right course. <laughs> I just don't know what I'm talking about. Um, the uh, last week is going to cover uh, the last chapter uh, in our textbook and essentially uh, is going to be the culmination of all the information that we have discussed uh, previously throughout the course. Uh, just kind of puts the icing on the cake of all the previous discussions that we've had. Uh, don't forget though that even though this is uh, week seven of the course, we still have a uh, discussion board uh, and a vocabulary quiz that uh, you need to take place, uh, need to participate in also. And then don't forget that once this week is uh, complete, you've got to submit your PowerPoint uh, presentation as your final course project. Uh, and that PowerPoint presentation should have uh, voice narration with it. Uh, so um, <clears throat> when you are presenting that information to me, it's similar to what you see me doing here where uh, you're actually uh, walking me through the slides. And um, uh, if you've never done that before, uh, there's a help section uh, in PowerPoint that tells you exactly how to use that. And you should be putting uh, strategic notes at the bottom of your your um, uh, slides uh, in the speaker's notes section at the bottom of each of the slides uh, that will serve as your uh, script that you can actually read from. So it's very helpful and it gives you practice uh, in uh, talking before groups. That's one of the reasons why we do that. Okay, so anyway, let's uh, pull up the uh, slides. You've got this again embedded as a PowerPoint in your course. Uh, that welcome to week seven last week of the course is how this one should read. Uh, and chapter 10 is communicating the strategy and developing action plans. And by what they mean by communicating the strategy is that uh, what we've been doing throughout the entire course uh, is, um, you know, uh, trying to look at our organization from a lot of different perspectives and pulling together what we're going to put on paper is going to be what we call our strategic plan. And, and to get to that strategic plan on paper, uh, we had to go through a strategic planning process. And to get to the point now where it's finished, uh, and we're satisfied with what we have reduced to paper, we now are going to develop action plans that are going to help us uh, actually put into place the things that we feel confident enough are actually going to work for our organization uh, and demonstrate that uh, this is what our strategic plan is supposed to do. Uh, and again, the whole idea is to be able to add value uh, to our healthcare organization and make sure that people are getting uh, the best uh, healthcare uh, products, goods, and services that we can offer them. Uh, chapter 10. Uh, you should uh, have the takeaway message and the learning objectives for this chapter is to be able to describe the interrelationship among situation analysis, strategic formulation, value-adding service delivery and support strategies, and action plans. Be able to understand the manner in which strategies are translated into action plans. Be able to list the components of an action plan and explain the function of each component. Be able to cite some reasons that cause strategies to be difficult to implement in healthcare organizations. Uh, be able to suggest some effective ways to overcome barriers to the implementation of strategies. Be able to understand the need for contingency planning and know when contingency plans should be undertaken. And the last one, uh, learning objective number seven, is be able to relate the map and the compass metaphor to strategic thinking strategic planning, and managing the strategic momentum. In other words, um, have an idea what, uh, what they're talking about when they uh, introduce you to the map of the compass. Um, and now again, going back to uh, uh, embedded uh, slides that you've had in previous presentations, we are at the very bottom of the exhibit called the strategic planning process. Again, uh, we started with the situation analysis. We went to a strategic formulation, and now we're bringing it full circle here at the end of the course. Uh, with the planning, the implementation stage, uh, and we are actually looking at action plans of things that we're going to do to be able to uh, uh, put into play the, the strategic plan that we put on paper. Uh, now, uh, that unit, that, that plan that we're going to look at, these action plans uh, are going to be um, uh, things that should contain an objective. Uh, they should uh, be action-oriented. Uh, they should have a timeline associated with them, and it should... Uh, uh, have um, a, um, a way to identify who's going to be responsible for taking for action the objectives and the actions and the timeline that's going to be met uh, that we put on paper. So, uh, again, um, 
To be able to do that, uh, they give you an example of what an action plan might look like, and it's just a simple uh, exhibit where it says action plan at the top, and you start out with the objective statement. Uh, and then after that, you just have a column that says what your uh, actions are to, that you can put down to achieve an objective statement, uh, what the completion date is, and who the responsible persons are that uh, are going to be taking those actions uh, forward and trying to make them happen. So again, this is a simplistic way by uh, holding people accountable. Uh, now, there are a lot of different ways to do this and a lot of different examples that I've, probably many of you have seen maybe in, in some of your different courses uh, uh, that you've taken here at Hodges, but um, when I was in the military, we used to do something similar that was called uh, a POANM. It was called a Plan of Action with Milestones. And essentially, it was the same thing, except at the top it said Plan of Action, uh, and underneath it, it said Plan of Action with Milestones, or POANM. Uh, and it had uh, uh, the same thing here as far as the columns go, where you identify what the action is going to be, uh, a milestone date as to when it needs to, it's going to be achieved. Uh, the responsible person that's going to be targeted for uh, being responsible for making this happen. And then in ours, we also had a comments uh, column uh, where if something uh, needed to be said about a particular action or the completion date or who was going to be doing it, uh, you could specify in the com comments uh, uh, column uh, what pertains to that particular action. So again, it's just a simplistic way of uh, reducing to paper uh, so others can see uh, what you're doing relative to getting the job done and again, remember what we're doing here is we are um, uh, developing an action plan that is going to be taking all the strategic planning processes that we've now reduced to paper, and we're coming up with a plan about how we're going to actually make it happen. So, uh, one of the things that you need to be aware of, though, actually quite a few things that you need to be aware of uh, that may transpire uh, during this process of developing action plans, uh, which may uh, try to throw a monkey wrench into what it is that you're doing, and they're kind of... Uh, paradoxes because sometimes uh, things will occur that you have to sit back and look at it and say, well, how did that happen? Now, that's that's uh, not what we intended for something to, to uh, happen uh, based on the action plans that we've established or the strategic processes that we've put in place. And sometimes something will happen that's just so out of the ordinary uh, that it's kind of bizarre. So uh, the authors have put together for you uh, several charts here that they refer to as the strategic management paradoxes. Uh, that you need to be aware of. And they start out like this. The more unpredictable the external environment, the more strategic plan is needed. So be aware that uh, as you um, are, are analyzing the uh, environment that's external to your organization, if you can't get a, a handle on what's going on out there, uh, it's going to be extremely unpredictable. Uh, and that means that you're going to have to be really savvy when it comes to uh, doing strategic planning uh, that is going to help you uh, to uh, move forward in the future. Because if you don't have a good idea what's happening in your geographic area, your target market, outside of your organization, uh, that's going to really complicate the process of strategic planning. So uh, just be aware that if it's extremely unpredictable, that may cause problems for you. You need to be aware of it. Uh, another paradox, strategic management is a top-down, bottom-up process. Um, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, sometimes it can be driven from the top down to people below them, sometimes it's driven from the bottom up, uh, sometimes it happens simultaneously, and because there are so many different people involved in this process of strategic management, uh, depending on your organization, there may be a prevalent uh, top-down approach to it, there may be a prevalent bottom-up approach to it, uh, or the entire process may be a combination of both, where you have people uh, from... Um, uh, the uh, chief executive suite that are uh, driving the messages down to everybody underneath them, but the people that are underneath them are driving messages back up to them simultaneously to let them know that some of the strategic management processes that you've developed uh, are good ideas or people don't think they're good ideas or just bring to their attention that uh, you know maybe what they are trying to force from the top down uh, may not be a good idea at all and you need to bring that to their attention. So be aware that um, the entire strategic management process can you know, occur from the top down or the bottom up or a combination of both. Also be aware that strategic management is a democratic process where the boss is in control. Um, uh, well, that's the paradox. The boss is not always in control. And just like I was talking about uh, the top down, bottom up process, uh, bosses always like to think that they're, they're in control and when they're driving uh, ideas from the top down 
uh, trying to get you to do things that they think is important. Sometimes the people that are working out there on the trenches uh, have to bring them back to reality and let them know that, hey, you may be the boss, but you may not necessarily be in control of this process because you don't really know what's happening out here in the trenches. So that's part of the whole strategic manning process. Creative management process is you've got to bring that uh, bad news to their attention, uh, which means that uh, uh, this whole strategic manning management process um, is democratic in the sense that everybody's participating and everybody has input that should be considered to be important, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the boss is being control, be in control of the entire process. Another pro paradox, strategic management is an organized and messy process. Um, if it is working correctly, it should not be a messy process. It should be fairly organized. Uh, so uh, even though on the surface, uh, many people that have never done this before may think that it's messy because they don't see how all the parts work together, uh, what that means to you as someone that's involved in it is that maybe all those other pieces and elements and people need to be brought to the table closer and brought in closer to the vest so they can understand that there really is a method to your madness and that you really do know uh, how this whole thing is going to roll out. If they uh, recognize it or think that it's messy uh, and that there's no organization to it, then you need to bring them closer into the uh, process so they can see that there really is a method that is being followed. Another paradox is it is about the big picture emphasize it is about the big picture emphasizing the details. Uh, actually, it, it could be just the other way around. It could be the details emphasizing the big picture. Uh, so even though a lot of people like to say, well, you know, we're, we're shooting for the, what the big picture is, and you know, ultimately we're we're looking at this from a macroscopic level as opposed to a microscopic level. The fact of the matter is, is that uh, the devil is in the details and nothing is going to happen to the big picture and looking at this macroscopically unless all of the legwork is done down here in the trenches where the details are going to really make things happen. So that can be a misnomer and a paradox that people need to be aware of as well. Uh, people cannot perform strategic management until they understand the process and people can't understand the process until they perform strategic management. Um, that is a paradox in that uh, most people, uh, until they become a manager, uh, have, not have not participated in the strategic manning process. Uh, but once you become a middle, middle management uh, uh, individual, uh, there will be a time where you are going to become f familiar with the strategic management. Uh, and by virtue of uh, being in a management program now, relative to your education, and at the um, uh, degree in which you are pursuing your education, you are taking a class that is teaching you about strategic management. So as a graduate level student, someone that's pursuing a master's degree, uh, you should be able to understand the process now because that's what we're educating you about doing it. So uh, you may not have personally done it before in the past uh, and actually participated, but now that you've gone through this course, hopefully you're going to be able to latch on and grasp a lot of this information uh, if it becomes more pertinent in, in your future. Uh, as a manager in the organization. So, you know, this is a misnomer. People cannot perform strategic management until they understand the process. Uh, that is not necessarily true. Uh, uh, and just as I said, we're educating you to that purpose. So uh, make sure that you keep this textbook. This could be uh, a very handy reference guide for you in the future. Another paradox is everybody wants a strategic plan, but it's the process that it's important. Um, I'm not sure that uh, that's much of a paradox because uh, most people that uh, work in organizations don't want a strategic plan, uh, except maybe for management. Um, and that uh, when you say it's the process that is important, well, uh, you know, you can't get to the process again until you, again, like we're looking at the devil is in the details. Uh, there have got to be a, lot of, be a lot of people that are involved in this process. and Not everybody wants a strategic plan because they don't want to be part of the process. A lot of people think it's that it's busy work and that, uh, you know, maybe they've had a bad uh, experience with in the past where they've gone through uh, months and months and months of participating in all kinds of teamwork that has resulted in a strategic uh, plan for the organization and what the bosses did then was put it up on the shelf and let it grow dust. Um, and maybe that's why they've got a bad taste in their mouth about this. Well, you know, if the organization is savvy and you've got strong leadership at the executive level, uh, that's not what strategic planning should be all about. You shouldn't waste the time, the, the resources, 
uh, and uh, all the things that go into strategic planning uh, that take away from a lot of important stuff that goes on within an organization uh, to only put it on the shelf and let it grow dust. I mean, this, this uh, time is money, and this is definitely going to cost you a lot of time. Uh, so uh, it's something that um, you have to take seriously and uh, make sure that everybody that's participating understands that it, it takes a lot of involvement from a lot of people and a lot of uh, dedication, um, not only from uh, senior uh, executive level leadership, but from the grassroots level in the organization and everybody in between. Uh, they have to contribute to the process uh, to make sure that everybody understands that the strategic plan uh, is, in fact, uh, very important. Um, another uh, paradox is strategic management concerns uh, effectiveness and efficiency. Um, well, uh, yes and no. Uh, sometimes uh, you can have things that are effective, but they are not efficient. And sometimes you can have things that are efficient and not effective. And sometimes you can have uh, strategic management concerns that are neither of those. Uh, so again, that's a paradoxical statement of something that uh, may be a misnomer that people believe uh, is absolutely true to the strategic management process, uh, but it may not necessarily be the case. Uh, other people think, have a paradoxical belief that strategic management uh, uh, is all about control and empowering people. Uh, actually, it should be uh, just the opposite. Uh, it should be uh, freeing up an organization to uh, get people to understand that teamwork works a lot more effectively uh, as opposed to uh, someone who is controlling every aspect of an organization and pushes everything down to that point uh, where uh, it's their way or the highway. Uh, strategic management uh, doesn't necessarily control and empower anybody. What it does is uh, uh, probably decentralizes control. Uh, and lets other people have power that may not necessarily have had power before. So in that respect, that statement is a paradox as well. Another one is strategic management concerns destruction and renewal. Uh, well, not necessarily. As we've talked about in recent weeks, you know, as you are analyzing what's going on within your organization and, and uh, especially analyzing internally what you're doing as an organization, uh, you may find out that you're doing a lot of things that are being done very well and that you don't have to destroy them uh, to move forward with a, a strong and coherent uh, strategic plan. Uh, you don't necessarily have to redo anything. You may find out as part of the strategic credit management process for your organization that you're doing almost everything correctly. And that may be a result of uh, previous people doing a good strategic plan that's gotten you to the point where you're at now that was very successful. So it doesn't necessarily mean that um, uh, just because you're doing strategic management, you have to be concerned that you're going to be destroying everything that's been done in the past uh, to get to a renewal process to try and reinvent the organization. So that's not necessarily true. Uh, in some organizations that are not doing very well and really need a strategic management approach uh, to do a bit better business, well, that statement might in fact uh, be more true for them because, in fact, you may have to uh, do away with a lot of things that are being done in an organization because they're not being done correctly. Uh, that would, in fact, give a rebirth or renewal to the organization. Um, another paradoxical statement, the rules for success are written outside the organization in the environment, but competitive advantage is created inside the organization. Well, again, uh, that, you know, that statement might be 50-50 because you could actually say just the opposite. Uh, you could say that the rules for success are not written outside the organization, but written on the inside. Uh, and that competitive advantage is created outside the organization, not on the inside. So you could actually flip-flop those statements and that would be just as true. Uh, and that is the case. Uh, just because um, uh, people are doing something and writing the way that they do it uh, externally in their environment and it's working well for them, uh, and they're being successful doesn't necessarily mean that if you adopt that approach and you bring it inside your organization that you're going to be just as successful. And by the same token, um, if you have competitive advantage that you've already created within your organization, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, someone from the outside can be able to take that uh, and take those same things and put them in place in their organization that's going to work as well for them. So, you know, again, that's a paradox uh, and those statements can be reversed and are not necessarily true. Um, managers seek quantifiable data, but strategic management is basically a qualitative art. 
Well, I think as you have seen and uh, as looked at uh, by this textbook, you know, when you're doing an internal and external uh, analysis of the organization, uh, managers that are um, uh, looking at uh, quantifiable data uh, are in fact uh, quite savvy in being able to uh, address strategic management processes that are going to be pertinent to your strategic plan. Um, and uh, this statement that says managers seek quantifiable data, uh, but strategic management is basically a qualitative arc. Well, it may be to a certain degree, but I got to tell you, without that data to back it up, you're essentially shooting from the hip. So you may have savvy managers that sit around a table at the senior, elect, elect, uh, 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 senior leadership level uh, and uh, may have been in business themselves for the last 30 years uh, being fairly successful. But I guarantee you that they didn't get that way simply because they were qualitative thinkers thinking, you know, of all of these pie-in-the-sky uh, nice ideas to ways to do things. Uh, they didn't get to that point by not looking at data because uh, healthcare is a data-driven uh, industry uh, and it's essentially how we uh, have to evaluate how well we're doing things because uh, our organizations have to depend on uh, making a buck and staying in the business uh, to be able to make payroll every week. Uh, that doesn't matter what, if you are a for-profit or not-for-profit organization. If you don't make money at the end of the week to make payroll, uh, it doesn't matter what your tax status is. Uh, you're not going to make any money to stay in business. And the only way that you can do that is by looking at data uh, that supports how well that you are doing your business. And that data has to be quantifiable. It can't be junk. Uh, so, you know, we've talked about that not only in this course to a certain degree, but I'm sure in previous courses too, especially if you've already had financial management, uh, you understand how important uh, quantifiable data is uh, from a lot of different perspectives. Uh, another uh, paradoxical statement is strategic management is a philosophy but has techniques. Uh, well, you know, there's a, an argument where you can flip those around and say strategic management uh, has techniques uh, that result in a philosophy. You could say it just that way as, as well. Uh, bottom line is, is that it is both. Uh, strategic management has a lot of philosophies in which the entire process is based. Uh, but it also is reliant on uh, techniques that we have to put in place to be able to do things like analyzing organizations internally and externally and then coming up with action plans. Uh, but um, uh, having techniques in place to be able to do that essentially uh, allows us to develop philosophies for the future as well because, uh, you know, maybe we don't have a lot of philosophy as the data-driven uh, is, is the, that it may not the, be the term that's driving and the thinking that's driving our organization, uh, but we may have a lot of savvy managers that have a lot of uh, uh, time-tested uh, techniques that they put into place from a management standpoint of view uh, that help us to develop what our philosophy is going to be. So uh, strategic management is a philosophy but has techniques. It's not necessarily um, a statement that is true all the time, and you can reverse those as well. So essentially, um, all of those uh, paradoxical statements <coughs> are going to be things that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, bring me back to the point where uh, we are going to be asking ourselves, uh, how are we going to manage uh, strategic momentum uh, by evaluating the action plans that we have now developed? So we're now at the point where we actually have developed uh, by you know, putting together our spreadsheet and our charts where we developed an action plan said what the action is going to be, what the timeline is that we want to achieve it in, who the responsible people are going to be, and then made comments accordingly that are pertinent to that particular action plan item. Um, but how do we manage that uh, information as we go forward? Well, we need to ask ourselves questions like this. Has the organization's overall strategy been well communicated to all members of the organizational units? In other words, does the entire organization know what we're doing with these action plans as a result of developing them uh, to help us uh, implement this uh, strategic uh, plan that we've developed? Uh, are these action plans things that are going to affect organization units at all levels, uh, whether it's a division, or department, um, uh, or a standalone unit that uh, supports other parts of the organization? Are they all aware of uh, what those strategies are, and uh, you know, have we communicated that effectively? So if we haven't, uh, we ask ourselves that question, obviously that's something we want to do. Uh, we also want to ask ourselves, do the organization units have resources required for successful implementation of the strategy? Again, this goes back to the resources that are provided to us uh, through 
uh, executive leadership? Do they have they given us the money uh, and the people and the other resources available to, to go ahead and implement this strategy? If they haven't, um, you know, then every, all the uh, time that we spent on putting together a strategic uh, management plan uh, and coming up with action plans is going to be for nothing if we can't afford to put it in place. We also want to ask ourselves, uh, is there a high level of commitment to the strategy with the organizational unit? Uh, and by the time you get to the point where you are, in fact, communicating all this information to the rest of the organization, uh, you will have a good idea of whether or not, in fact, that's the case because people will be very um, forceful in, in letting you know that they support or they don't support or whether or not they've got questions still. Uh, you also want to ask yourself the question, has the organizational unit, uh, units developed action plans themselves, uh, including realistic objectives, timelines, responsibilities, and budgets? In other words, uh, are they doing things already that may be in conflict with what you developed uh, in evaluating the action plans that are part of the strategic plan? So you need to ask those questions and find out whether or not people are doing something out there that's completely different than what you've got planned. Uh, and if that's the case, you've got to come to a meeting of the minds that is uh, going to help everybody singing off the same sheet of music and doing the same thing. We also want to ask the question, are the unit objectives consistent and compatible with the strategy? Uh, just pretty much stated that again. Do the organizational units have the managerial and employee capabilities required for successfully implementing the organization's strategy? Again, that goes back to have the resources been provided to us by upper level management to make these things happen. We also ask ourselves, do the combined action plans accomplish the overall strategies of the organization? And after the, at the end of the day, when all of this is said and done, that's probably the most important question that you want to ask yourself is, you know, what we put on paper relative to the action plans is it actually going to accomplish something that uh, is going to move the organization ahead uh, and, and contribute to this strategic plan? If we can't answer yes to that, uh, then we've wasted a lot of time in this entire process. So uh, bottom line is after you uh, have gotten your action plans on paper and you know what you want to do, you step back and you ask yourself, uh, here are some things that we want to do as part of the strategic management process. And there are definitely things that we don't want to do. The do's are understand that strategic management is a philosophy, not just a technique. Understand that the process is more important than the product. Involve everyone possible in the process to ensure ownership. Realize that identifying the external issues is an, an essential task. Expect that it is really hard work. It may take years for folks to, to be able to think strategically. Uh, remember that it's all about, it can all be about renewal, be ready to learn, rethink, reinvent, and create, uh, and expect the process to be exciting and challenging. Uh, those are the do's, and relative to the don'ts. Uh, don't expect it to be a magic bullet. Don't expect it to be work without full commitment from top management. Don't rely on consultant, outsiders, or small staff groups to get the work done. Don't expect that everyone will understand at first. Uh, what is going on because essentially people learn by doing. Uh, don't expect immediate results. It may mean a fundamental change uh, that has to exist throughout the organization before you start to see any results whatsoever. Make sure you follow the process. Uh, don't follow the process blindly. Uh, we need both a map and a compass to be able to get where we want to go. And be, don't expect that the organization will survive without change. So uh, that essentially wraps up uh, chapter 10. Uh, the concluding uh, key terms in this chapter, the things that you want to look at are uh, understand uh, what an action plan is, take a look and get an understanding of what um, is referred to as a balanced scorecard, and I think in some of your other management courses you've already had that uh, information uh, passed down to you as well. Uh, become familiar with the term contingency planning, and of course what objectives are and the paradoxes of strategic management that we're just talking about uh, in uh, several of the slides uh, that I was just talking about uh, as part of this presentation. So, my friends, this is uh, uh, the end of the course. Uh, I would like to remind you that at the end of this week, make sure that you take a look at the dates for uh, when your final course PowerPoint presentation is to be submitted. I believe that the um, uh, university has opened up three specific dates, so you can go in on any one of those dates 24-7 and submit it. Uh, obviously, the sooner you can get that information to me that I can begin grading, the quickly, quicker you'll get a final grade uh, and see that reflected in your grade book. 
So uh, again, thank you very much for your time and attention uh, in this course, and good luck with your future endeavors. Uh, I hope to see many of you around the block uh, in some of my other courses, uh, depending on where you are in your lineup of courses in your program. And uh, again, this week, as we finish up uh, this final course, uh, Chapter 10 in Week uh, 7, if you have any questions, don't be a stranger. You know how to get in touch with me by email. Give me a telephone call, and uh, maybe we can you know, uh, solve your problem very quickly. So uh, thanks again for your attention, and I will see you again, hopefully, in the not-too-distant future. Bye-bye.